Hey everyone, my name is Jose, aka Joe Engineer, and today I'm going to show you how to set up the fuel mixture for initial startup on an air-cooled 911 running Bosch CIS K-Jetronic fuel injection. Thank you once again for joining me on another uh, video. Uh, as I uh, continue on my never-ending mission to break up Bosch CIS K Jetronic uh, fuel injection into bite sized chunks that are uh, hopefully easy to understand and easy to um, to apply on your own cars to get them to run uh, as, as, as good as possible. And the the main audience for this particular video is someone who has gone through a major service on their fuel injection system, uh, CIS uh, in particular. Uh, let's say you either repaired a bunch of vacuum leaks or you sent your fuel distributor and warm-up regulator out to get rebuilt or you've just taken it completely apart, put it back together and you just don't know where it is in terms of uh, um, an initial setup in order to get it to fire up the first time you turn the key. So the goal of this video is to show you all of the pre-flight checks that you need to do on the system in order to be able to set this up uh, to a fuel mixture that is going to increase your chances chances of success the first time you turn the key to get it to fire up or run in a reasonable fashion so that then you can do further tuning and you know, tune the fuel mixture to where you want it, uh, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Now we're only gonna cover how to set up the initial mixture just to get the thing to fire. So uh, you could think of it as a, like, a, like a video on how to set up your initial timing where, you know, you have to get the crank pulley to line up to you know, get some notches to line up on the crank pulling and get the distributor rotor to line up to a certain, the notch on the, the distributor pulley, uh, just to get the thing to light up and, and fire so that then you can adjust your timing to whatever it needs to be. Or say for example, on, a, on an older carbureted car, um, you know, you've got several adjustments on the carburetor where you have to turn some screws all the way in then back them out two and a half turns or you know something of that nature in order to get the thing to be able to fire and and then you proceed with more tuning um, so yeah so let's get to it uh, there are a few actually there are quite a few uh, prerequisites that uh, must be completed before you proceed with turning any kind of adjustments on on, on this device uh, number one, you have to verify that all of the subcomponents on your CIS uh, assembly are working correctly. So all of the all of the sensors, all of the valves, all of the things that are attached to it uh, need to be working correctly. Um, I have a blog post where I go through. A method to bench test every single one of these subcomponents. I'll link it in the description. So you first have to ver verify that all these things on this Rube Goldberg machine are functioning so that they all do their job uh, correctly together. Second of all, you have to make sure that there are no vacuum leaks in the system. So you have to do a smoke test and uh, verify that there are no vacuum leaks uh, in the system at all uh, because if there are any vacuum leaks in the system then they're going to throw off your your air fuel ratio and you're going to have a bad time when you start it up it's not going to run or it's going to surge or just trust me you cannot skip this part you must um, perform a smoke test and verify that there are no vacuum leaks in the system prior uh, to proceeding i have a video that i just created on how to do a smoke test it's super easy. Um, I'll link it somewhere, either on the screen or in the description. So uh, you must do that beforehand as well. <clears throat> Next, you need to 
verify that all of your fuel pressures are within spec. And again, I also have a video that I'll link somewhere on the screen or in the description to show you step by step on how to verify that your fuel pressures are, um, how to test them and how to verify that they are within spec. Your system pressure, cold control pressure, warm control pressure, and your residual pressures. So you need to make sure that those are um, within spec before going on to the next step. While you do the fuel pressures test, you need to verify that your fuel lines and all of the fittings um, have no uh, fuel leaks of any kind. Uh, this is especially important on the back side, or rather the front side of the engine, the engine that is closest to the firewall facing the front of the car. Um, because the front of the engine on a CIS system is kind of obscured, you can't really, it's tough to see between the engine and the firewall. Uh, so we need to make sure that there are no fuel leaks present. Uh, so double check all of that while you're doing your uh, fuel pressures test and make sure that there are no fuel leaks. Next, you need to make sure in particular that your cold start valve is working. Um, refer to the link to my blog that shows you how to um, uh, bench test all of the subcomponents in the system and in there within that article is a specific test on how to check the cold start valve. Now the cold start valve test that I performed was just simply a, a check with a multimeter to make sure that um, that there was a closed circuit within the cold start valve itself. Um, there's actually another bench test where you can pull it out the back of the air box and make sure that it's like spraying fuel. Um, but you most likely you don't need to do that at this point. Those uh, cold start valves rarely fail and more than likely, as long as you verify that, um, that there's a closed circuit between the pins on the back of the cold start valve, that uh, you will be uh, okay and that it will work. So do that test um, before you install it back uh, uh, in the back of the airbox and verify that it functions along with the rest of your uh, subcomponents. Next, uh, you will need a couple of tools. Um, you will need a tiny, a tiny hex wrench I believe it is a three millimeter uh, hex or Allen key. Uh, there is a particular one that you can buy that is specific to, that is better suited uh, or is the right shape for um, adjusting the fuel mixture on Porsches. It's kind of like a, has kind of like a T-shape um, and it fits, it fits in this uh, very cramped space between the firewall um, the fuel distributor and the, the, the CIS boot. So you could get away with a, a regular L-shaped uh, Allen key, but the, the, the particular one that we are showing here is uh, the best one for the job. And you can get those anywhere. You can get them on probably on Amazon by this point, but for sure from Pelican Parts or any of the European uh, parts um, supply uh, uh, suppliers. You will also need a set of six tiny containers that you can collect fuel in. In my case I used six very tiny baby bottles with the, um, the top opening of the rubber nipple cut off so that I can put a fuel injector line in the top of each one. Those are super convenient so grab those at any Walmart, Target, Amazon, eBay, whatever, um, your local grocery store, uh, but you will need six of them uh, so that you can uh, put each fuel line uh, into uh, a baby bottle and uh, observe the, the amount of fuel that is being uh, sprayed by each, each fuel line and each injector. Um, you will also need a, a jumper for your fuel uh, uh, fuel pump relay. Um, 
it's simply a uh, two two wires with a bullet connector on each end uh, and a, um, a fuse and uh, I describe if you look at my fuel pressures test video it shows you uh, in more detail how to what it what the parts are uh, are that make it how to install it into the fuel pressure relay socket um, and how to get the fuel pump to run uh, with the engine off. You also need to disconnect the six pin plug on the bottom of the CDI box over here. Uh, so make sure you unplug that before you start the test. Um, we're going to be running the, the fuel pump with the engine off and we want to make sure that the ignition is um, the ignition components aren't firing while the engine is off as well. Also, there is something called a thermo time switch that is uh, this little sensor on the left chain box. This little guy right here, and disconnect the two wires going to it. The red one and the yellow one that you see here. This thermo time switch is responsible for controlling the cold start valve in the back of the the air box. We don't want the cold start valve to be running during this test because all we care about is the amount of fuel that is being sprayed uh, into each of the fuel lines and each of the injectors. So disconnect those two wires and you will temporarily disable the cold star valve for this test. For those of you with an 80 to 83 911, make sure you disable your lambda circuit by coming over to the left side of the engine and down in the, the cooling tin, following the, the one wire that comes out of this grommet here through the cooling tin down to the O2 sensor uh, on the exhaust. Disconnect that guy. Uh, normally there's a rubber uh, connector and a rubber boot somewhere kind of up here, but mine's a modified and it's now just a spade connector. So make sure you unplug that wire so that the uh, frequency valve, which um, operates with the feedback of the, the uh, O2 sensor, uh, is not having an effect on our uh, fuel pressures and that uh, it doesn't uh, change the um, the amount of fuel that is coming through our fuel lines for this setup. Then you want to go ahead and put each of the fuel injector uh, lines into the individual baby bottles. So if you if you don't have these installed in the intake runners, then do not install them, um, and just take the the bare fuel line without the injector and drop it into the top of each baby bottle uh, to, to collect fuel. If you have them installed as they are here, then if you have a piece of an extra fuel line or uh, you know, in the case if you have soft lines or maybe like another junk hard line with the fuel line with a fuel fitting attached to it, then you can use that as a removal tool to unscrew these and screw the extra line into the top of each injector so you have a handle to pull them out. Um, if you don't have that, then you could get a, you know, these injectors are just held in by an O-ring into each intake runner. So you could get like a plastic trim tool, wedge it down here and pop them out. Um, you know, if you lever against the casting, you can hopefully pop each of these out of each runner. Be very, 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 very careful that you don't damage any of the fuel lines, especially these, these hard lines. So um, whatever you do to remove the injectors, make sure that, that you are uh, very careful and don't, don't cause any damage to each of these. At this point, we're gonna get ready to make some adjustments to, to the, the fuel mixture. So you wanna take your wrench and you want to insert it in a hole that is between the fuel distributor 
and the CIS boot. There's kind of a kind of a pocket in the fuel distributor, right, right here. So that's where you'll be putting the um, the wrench, right in here where my finger is in this depression. So you grab your wrench, kind of sort of maneuver it in there. You'll see the tiny hole. Come on, right there. There's there's a tiny hole. Drop the wrench in, and it's going to go into a, a little hex uh, set screw of some kind. You'll feel it drop in. And don't turn any, don't adjust anything yet, but you'll feel when it's, when it's in there. Uh, it has kind of a detent in it so that when you adjust it, it'll go click, 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 click a few degrees in order to make the adjustment. But take your... Take your little wrench and drop it in that hole and make sure that it's fully seated. When you are making adjustments to the fuel mixture, turning the wrench clockwise will make the mixture richer. Turning the wrench counterclockwise will make the mixture leaner. Over here at the front of the car, take your your jumper, go to your fuse box, remove the cover, and the fuel pump relay is the big red one right here. So remove it, and underneath the, um, the relay there are each pin is identified with a number, and we will be connecting pins uh, 87A and 30 together. So if you look at, there's 87A and there's 30 right across from each other, this guy and this guy. So match those up with the socket and make sure that you uh, pick the correct terminals in here with your jumper. Here's the jumper and the correct terminals. Once you've got that connection, uh, you can go back to the front of the car. I mean, sorry, the rear of the car. Then you want to go back and turn on the ignition and then run back over here because fuel will start to spray into the baby bottles that is um, that are positioned under each fuel line. Initial fuel distributor setup. Take your injectors out, put each line straight into a little baby bottle, uh, empty obviously. Disable the O2 sensor, disable the thermal time switch, uh, disable the CDI, jump the fuel pump relay so the pump runs with the key open, run the pump. Using the adjustment screw, uh, turn clockwise very slowly until fuel just starts to come out of the injectors. And as you can see, we've got it is just starting to drip out. Then at that point, you stop and you back it off half a turn and that's your initial setup without the injectors and you repeat the test again with injectors. The second part of the test will involve doing the same thing but uh, taking each injector, screwing it to the top of each fuel line and dropping the injector itself into the um, the baby bottle. That way, you can see how much fuel is actually spraying out of the the uh, fuel injector opening. Part two of the fuel distributor initial setup test. After completing the prior test with just the injector lines straight into the baby bottles. 
um, you adjust the flow clockwise until you get the the bare lines to just start dripping fuel into the bottles. Then you back it off half a turn, and that's your initial setup without injectors. Then you install the injectors, repeat the test, start opening clockwise slowly, and after three 60 degree turns, we are starting to we have just started to flow fuel. You can barely see it, but there's a fine cone spray coming out of each injector. It's a little bit uneven because it's just enough pressure to crack them open. If I open up any more, then it should be a stronger spray, but they're all flowing now. Three, two, one, four, Five and six. Now we just back it off again, half a turn, and that's our initial setup. After each of these fuel adjustment procedures, you should be observing the amount of fuel that has flowed into each of the baby bottles, both without the injectors and with the injectors installed. In each case, there should be an even amount of fuel that has flowed um, into each baby bottle uh, because every cylinder uh, should receive the exact same amount of fuel in an ideal uh, situation. So if you notice that any of the fuel amounts are off before you uh, install the injectors, then that means that you have either a problem with a fuel line, like a, a clog, or you have a problem with the fuel distributor itself where it may have dirty passages or require some adjustment or it may even require a full rebuild, which is out of the scope of, of this video. But you can't proceed um, adjusting the mixture properly uh, without having approximately the, the same amount of fuel flowing out of each fuel line uh, during the first part of the test. Then once you install the injectors and you um, proceed with that um, second part of the mixture adjustment, uh, if you have any um, fuel amounts in the baby bottles that are different, then at that point you can trace the issue to uh, the individual injectors. You may have one individual injector that is clogged or stuck open or stuck closed or something. Um, and you can replace that individual injector and repeat the adjustment procedure until you have uh, even fuel flow through all of the, the baby bottles and all of the fuel lines. Once you're done with the two fuel mixture adjustments, reconnect everything the way uh, that it is supposed to. So. Reinstall the injectors back in each intake runner. Reinstall each fuel line on top of each injector. Reconnect the thermal time switch. Reconnect the CDI box. Uh, reconnect your fuel pump relay in the front. Oh, and one last thing. Don't forget to take this little guy back out. Don't leave it in, otherwise it's going to affect the way your your CIS runs. Uh, then after that, you should be able to uh, set your static timing using our favorite repair manual here. And once you've done all of that, you will have pretty much addressed all of the things necessary to get the engine to, to fire up. You will have addressed the spark, the air. Uh, remember, we fixed all the vacuum leaks and the fuel. So with those three elements, you should be able to be in a good position to fire up the engine, get it to start and uh, either proceed with engine break-in if you have a fresh rebuild or simply get your engine up and running so that you can go ahead and do the final tuning to go ahead and uh, hit the road. So thank you so much for for following me on, uh, on, on another uh, 
weird CIS video. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought about this format. I tried my best to kind of break down this sort of weird topic into into the most uh, you know the, the most simple format that that I could think of. Uh, so let me know what you think. But uh, thank you once again for uh, watching uh, another one of my videos. Uh, please like and subscribe and share. And um, hopefully I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Take care.